So a intuitive answer is that I want to find the x that minimize the difference between my observation y and the modeled observation, which is k multiplied by x. So the upper two means a square, and the lower two is the L2 norm of this vector. So some of you may already say, hey, this is uh, nothing else but the least square, right? You're absolutely right, but my question is actually, why is least square the optimal estimator in this case? So maybe the title already showed part of the answer. Yes, we are maximizing the likelihood, right? So what is likelihood? This is simply the probability of, of our data y with a given model and the signal x. So as I already mentioned, because our model is deterministic and, and, and the measurement is only, um, and the measurement has a Gaussian, Gaussian noise, that's why the likelihood can be modeled as a multivariate Gaussian distribution here with the mean value being the k multiplied by x and the covariance matrix is a c epsilon epsilon, right? So maximizing likelihood, which is usually done in a logarithmic scale, you end up with a, a formulation like this below and the factors in the front of the exponential is, is dropped in the maximization because it's constant. So often, if you look at this uh, formulation often, we assume the noise, the measurement noise, is independent and identical. Therefore, this means this covariance matrix is diagonal and constant, so does its inverse. That's why this formulation usually simplifies into the above uh, least square. Okay, so this is maximum likelihood estimation, a very short introduction. Um, but some of you may say, hey, you're maximizing um, the probability of y, which is data, right? But we want to maximize the probability of x, that is our signal. You're absolutely right. So that, this brings me to the maximum a posterior esti estimator. So the posterior means the probability of y, as you just said, given the observation x and the model. So the posterior here below can be written as this formulation. And here brings me a short recap of the famous uh, Bayes theorem. So the Bayes theorem simply says the joint probability A and B is interchangeable, right? This means that the probability A happens and B happens is identical to the probability B happens and A happens. And the joint probability can be represented as the conditional probability, this term here, multiply with the prior probability. So the conditional probability, this term, simply says the probability of A happens when B already happened. Okay, so then after some rearrangement, we end up with the very famous Bayes theorem. Okay, now back to our posterior. So as you can see, the posterior can be written as the product of the likelihood multiplied by the prior, which is the probability of x, and divided by the probability of y, which is usually called evidence. So since the evidence is not dependent on x, so it's usually dropped in the maximization of the posterior of x, right? So we are maximizing this term here. So maximizing the posterior um, leads to the maximum a posterior estimator. So of course here we need to assume a prior distribution and because prior is a prior knowledge we always known or we have to assume that. So again for simplicity we assume a multivariate Gaussian distribution for the prior of x with um, E of x being the expectation value and the covariance matrix C x x. So again maximizing the posterior in the logarithmic scale will give you a formulation like this. This is the likelihood term plus, sorry, this is the log likelihood term plus the log of the prior distribution, right? Again, the um, factors in front of the exponential is dropped because they are constant in the optimization. So after some rearrangement of this formula and with some assumptions, you usually end up with 
the formula in the bottom. That's what you usually see in literature. And with lambda being the so-called regularization parameter. And this is often known as Tikhonov regularization or L2 norm regularization. And of course, it's not the only maximum a posterior estimator. The MAP depends on your assumption of the likelihood as well as the prior. Okay, so nevertheless, as you can see, Bayesian estimation in the deterministic model it de depends on the measurement noise as well as on the uh, prior distribution. So if with the assumption of my previous slides of the Gaussian distribution, it is very easy to derive that the error covariance matrix, right, the, the error of my estimates can be uh, expressed in this formula. And this is very simple to understand. This intuitively means that here the noise of the measurement that is being propagated through the model and then combined with the covariance of the prior. So this is the Bayesian estimation for deterministic model, but um, what about in the machine learning model setup? So things are a little bit different. As you can see, the machine learning model is unknown in the beginning and it has to be trained. That's why I put a hat over the model parameter theta here to indicate that the model parameter has to be trained in the first place. So there are two steps um, here in order to get the prediction of x. So the first step is called a training, and this is to get the estimate of theta. And the second step is called testing, or sometimes called inference, is to simply feed the input y into the trained machine learning model f in order to get the prediction of x. So because of these two steps, so the, the uncertainty in our prediction x will depend on, of course, the model error as well as the measurement error. So if you further look at the model error, this will depend on the error in the training data, right? And another uh, dependency is on the model structural error. So model structural error simply means, for example, um, neural network architectures. So you're applying a very simple model on a very complex uh, problem. So the model is not able to describe the problem. So an important um, question here is to have a good training of the machine learning model. So then what is the maximum likelihood estimator for the machine learning model parameters? So the concept is similar as I explained. You're maximizing the likelihood of the training data with a given model parameter. So the formulation is similar as before. We are maximizing the likelihood of D with a given theta parameter. And of course, uh, when we are talking about maximum A posterior estimator, this will depend on the prior distribution of theta. This will depend on which network you use, which kind of problem you have with this network. A few examples of maximum likelihood estimator for regression um, problems and classification problems. So for regression network is usually the minimization of the L2 loss, right? as I mentioned before. It's the minimization of the difference between here the reference signal, our label, and the predicted signal here. And for classification network, the MLE is usually the minimization of the so-called cross entropy loss. So if you look at the equation, it's simply the reference probability um, of the ith class, so xi, multiply with the log of the predicted probability of the ith class. So the reference probability or the label is usually in one hot encoding. This means that it's either one or zeros. Right? So this equation can be further simplified. But nevertheless, here's important um, um, point I want to mention. And the MLE or MAP always depends on your assumption of the data and the assumption of the prior. For example, here we assume the data being a Gaussian distribution for the regression problem. And for the classification problem, we assume a multinomial distribution. So a violation of these assumptions in real data will degradate the performance of the MLE. 
Um, so this is maybe a little bit outside the scope of this course, but I think it's worth to know that.